Let's begin this Marion video by doing a quick recap on some of the things we've done up to now regarding annotations. That would be dimensions and notes. Let's start with a quick review of our site plan. We've got, I think, almost all the information we want on here. There may be some things that we'll review before we prepare for printing or for our final distribution of plans. Let's go to the floor plan. We've got the same thing in here. There may be some tags or some um, additional wall section um, identification marks, some drops in elevations that we want to include in here. So we'll give this a good look over before we do the final distribution. So what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and we want to begin to annotate our roof plan. So we want to put in some uh, roof materials, we want to put some additional information like that. But if you take a look at what we have here, is we have the information we want for the roof plan, including the dimensions. But as we annotated the site plan and the floor plan, they are showing up here in the roof plan. Now, they were put in the proper layer, but they're still showing up in here because we have not frozen those. So with this opened at this point, let's go ahead and let's take a look at what we've got. So we've got items like this. If you notice, it is on the site plan layer. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and let's go ahead and with the viewport open, we'll do our freeze command and we'll click right on there. Now let's go ahead and find some of the other items in here. If we do here, we can take a look at something. These happen to be in the GNO layer. We should have been changing those to the layer that we wanted to for the floor plan itself. So we're going to need to go back to the floor plan and adjust that, but we can adjust that right here also. So let's go ahead and let's isolate that layer. And with our viewport open, notice everything else has been turned off. With our viewport open, let's go ahead and select the items that we want and let's change them to the A Anno note floor right here. Now that should be turned on so we can see it. That's the layer that we want to go to. So let's go ahead and change them to that layer. Objects have moved to a frozen. Okay, do close. Let's go ahead and let's change our um, current layer to, let's just go to zero for now. Turn the current layer off. That's fine. And then what we're going to do is unisolate every other layer and see what we've got. So let's take a look again. And we can see that those are at now A Anno Note Floor. And now we can go ahead and using the freeze command. We can freeze every layer or every note that is on that. So let's take a look at a couple things that we want to adjust here on the roof plan before we begin any additional annotations such as roof material notes that we want to add on here. So let's go ahead and let's take a look. Let's zoom in. One of the things that I did not like here is that we have got our arrows are arrow, arrowheads are too small. So let's go ahead and let's see what we've got going on here. I'm going to go ahead and double click in here. And I'm going to look at my arrow size. I think that's too small, the 1 16th. So I'm going to go ahead and modify this right here. I can do it in my quick properties. Change that to 1 8th of an inch and see what that looks like. That looks a little bit better to me. But let's go ahead and let's make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to change this to 3 16 I'm not going as high as 1 quarter inch. But let's see what we've got in here. That looks much better. Now with that selected, what we can do is then we can do the match properties command. That's MA. And select that as the other ones that we want to match. And what we can do is we can then work our way around the roof and go ahead and highlight all of the arrowheads or arrow designations for our roof plan. And what we've done is we've 
I think made it look a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and move this one down a little bit. We had done that before, but I don't think I had moved it sufficient um, for it to look good enough. All right, so we've got our arrowheads changed. Let's go ahead and let's talk about beginning to do some um, additional information on here. So we're going to add some text. Um, for example, this is going to be our typical overhang. So we want to add some a note below here that's going to reflect what we want in terms of um, the information. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to see if we have, I'm going to go to layer properties here, I'm going to go to the manager, and I'm going to see if what we did was we added an A anno note for floor and an A anno note for site. We don't have one for the roof yet. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new one. I'm going to do A anno note and roof. We're going to leave it pretty much the same, but we are going to make it the current layer. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, we can turn off the current layer if we want. But let's, let's turn that back on. And I'm going to close that up. And we're ready to go with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do a couple things. I'm just going to do, make sure that I am in the annotate tab. I'm in my annotate text style. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a text box. I'm going to make sure cap locks is on. And what I can do is just put overhang and um, underneath it I can probably just put in parentheses typical. And I can duplicate that in a couple of areas. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move this so I'm a little happier with its exact positioning. And I'm just going to copy it. Maybe place it wherever else I have one is once here. I'm going to go ahead and place it back here. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it. I'm going to put my ortho to lock it into the correct way. And put that there. I'm just going to copy it one more time. Now again, this might be a little bit of overkill, but let's go ahead and place one here in the front. In addition to that, what I can do is I can then begin to place either my tags which show my pitch, which in this case is going to be 5 and 12, but we have nothing that tells them that. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and what I did here is I created a couple of commands here that are going to give us the pitch for a three-quarter inch scale, which would be this one, and then also for a quarter inch scale right here. So what I can do is I can go ahead and copy that and bring it on over to here for now. And I got to check and see what layer all of that is on. So it's on the G Anno. I want to bring it back to the correct layer that it's supposed to be in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to A Anno Note Roof. So there we go. I'm going to take a look at see what happened here because a lot of my tags here have turned off a lot of my information. Now I don't want to do that in model space so let's take a look at what happened here. So if we take a look at it I've got a number of things that are turned off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just highlight everything. Highlight the first one. Press my shift key and this way I'm tagging all of them and I'm going to go ahead and tag it so that they are all turned back on. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and close out of it. 
and everything seems to be back the way it is. Now I want to make sure that that worked on all my other plans, so let's take a look at here. Okay, so if we take a look at, I've got all my tags that came back that I want to hide, so I need to click here to hide those in there. I'm not going to want this one, which is the roof. So let's go ahead and let's change this back to zero. Now we can go ahead and use our freeze command and let's freeze that. Pool equipment. All right, so looking at our site plan, looks like we've got everything correct in here. We've got all our A anno note site information that we need. All of our A anno note roof um, is on, so we're going to be freezing that. And anything related to our floor plan is already turned off. So let's go ahead and open up our viewport. Let's go ahead and using the freeze command. And I'm going to go ahead and click on this small item in here. And that should turn this off as well as the additional information that we put on. Let's go ahead and freeze that. Hit enter. Let's go back out. Close our viewport. And let's go ahead and let's take a look at our floor plan. Let's go ahead and view up. I want to go back to the site plan for a second. And take one last look. Looks good. Floor plan, we want that off because that relates to the roof. So let's open that up. Freeze. And that freezes the information that we do not want on this. Let's go ahead and close. And let's go back to our roof plan. And now we can begin to additionally annotate some of the information that we need to put on there. So a couple things what I want to do is, this is our typical slope. And the size of this looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and open up our viewport. I'm going to modify this just a little bit. I'm going to pull this away from that. And we could duplicate this on each one of the pitches here if we wanted to. But this is our typical pitch. So we don't necessarily need to show this here. But we need to make a note about it somewhere. So we need to tell them that our, unless otherwise noted, the pitch of our roof is 5 and 12. Well, sometimes the best location to do that is going to be right here. So I usually like to put it underneath my roof pan, plan label. But right here, we're going to run into a little bit of problem with some of our um, dimensioning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into paper space where this tag is located. And I'm going to go ahead and lift that up in here. And just lift that to about there. And let's undo because I forgot. I accidentally did not bring the line with it. So let's go ahead and move. And let's bring that about up to here. And I'm going to go ahead and move my north arrow out of the way. And I'm going to place that out here. I think that works for me. Now I can bring this up just a tiny bit more. And I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and copy this down. And I'm going to copy it down here. And I'm going to go ahead and change the text on that. And I'm going to say 5 and 12 pitch UNO, which means unless otherwise noted. Now, if that doesn't come out, I'm just going to type in regen so that it loses its green. So that looks pretty good. Um, again, some people might want to do that in a different text. Some people might just go ahead and actually put the periods that. Some people might go ahead and put that in parentheses or leave a little bit 
in there. So this gives them an in information on what the pitch of the roof is, which is good. All right, everything else seems to be good. So we know that all of these, unless I put a note separately for those, is going to be a 5 and 12 pitch. So we can either put this down in here if we want to. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And I'm going to go ahead and move it down so we even have a descriptive representation of it right there. Now once again all of this might be a little bit of overkill but for now let's leave it and if we change our mind a little bit later we'll go ahead and adjust that. So all right let's go ahead and close that up. Our viewport I'm going to zoom extents. Let's take a look. Let's go ahead and let's begin put a little bit of material for what our roofing tile and our roofing is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I don't like the way it looks, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove it. And let's leave that the way it is right there. All right. So let's go back to our annotate tab at the top. We're still under annotative. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a text box right here. And I'm going to begin to put in the information that we are also going to have on the elevations and on the wall section. So what we want to do is we're going to go ahead with cap lock on concrete roof tile on that's 90 pound felt hot mop on 30 pound felt tin tagged on APA 40 forward slash 20 comma 19 30 seconds inch CDX which is an exterior grade plywood number one plywood sheeting so let's see how that looks that looks pretty good now all I need to do is to put a leader going into that um, I don't necessarily like the way this looks like so I may modify um, the type of text that it says justifies top left direction all of that looks great I would have to change my annotative style to be able to adjust that so I'm going to go ahead and leave it the way it is right now and start with my leader so making sure I am in the correct layer so let me see, did I set that on layer zero? That was another error that I gotta fix. So let's go ahead and change this to the correct A Anno Note roof layer. That looks much better. And let's go ahead, I'm gonna type in Q leader. And I'm gonna go ahead and set the beginning of my leader to this material here. And go to here and go F8 and bring it over to here and hit enter. Now everything looks great there with one exception. The size of my arrowhead is almost non-existent there. Now that means that I need to somehow fix that. My Q leader right now is, let's take a look at what we've got in here. Okay. So actually it just drew it as a line. So let's go ahead and try this as a Q leader. So I'm going to type in Q leader. Let's try that again. F8 and F8 to here and hit enter. Now there I'm getting an arrowhead but it's way too small for what I want to do. 
it's actually the correct size for our dimensioning and so on but let's take a look and see what we can do to quickly change this it says our arrow head size is 1 16th of an inch well everything else that we're doing is 3 30 seconds of an inch so that's actually a setting that we may have to change in our annotative style so 3 30 seconds is much better for that I'm gonna go ahead and if you notice my text is justified left that's how I want it it's the right size on there. So let's go ahead and copy this. And I'm one who tends to always want it justified to the left on that. Even if we're on this side, I want that justified correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this and I'm going to drag this in. I want this maybe a slightly different proportions. Um, like that so it doesn't stick out so much. I'm going to go ahead and move this in a little closer. That looks great. I'm going to do the same thing here. That looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and do another Q leader in here and I may have to change it again. So let's go ahead and do Q leader. And go ahead and I'm going to do a shoulder. It's two part process and here I hit enter. And I've got my arrowhead in there. I'm going to go ahead and double click and I'm going to change this once again to match my text height. I'm going to do 3 30 seconds of an inch. And that looks good. Everything looks great right there. So I think that's plenty of information at least at what we have right now. For the roof plan, we're going to go back and we're going to take a look at um, some additional information to see if we can add information to this. But this sort of already gives them the implication of what materials are going to be used on the roof. We're giving them what the pitch is for the roof. We're giving them the typical overhang. Additional information will be found when we do our um, wall section tag on here and the wall section will give them more information. So the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to begin to annotate our elevations. Um, so let's go ahead and let's go to that. Our elevations are located on our next sheet. So the first thing we want to do is we want to locate some of the tags that we're going to use. We can also bring in, um, if we go back to our model space, and we take a look at the information that we just did we can actually take some of that we go ahead and copy that and i'm going to bring it out to our elevations and we can begin to do our information at that point let's bring in add some additional information that we want so i'm going to bring in my pitch symbol here which we're going to use also under here and then the last thing we're going to be able to use in here besides that information is going to be our right here our beam so this one is for eighth inch which we used on the floor plan on the site plan this one is our quarter inch scale and this is for our wall sections at three quarter inch so this is the one we want to use so let's go ahead and bring that down to here and then we're going to be locating it at its right location. So let's go ahead and let's see what we can do. We could do this right here or we can do it also right on our elevation tags right here. So let's look at some of the things that we need to do. We need to tag where our top of beam is going to be. We also need to tag our top of slab. Now here, since the prime, it's in the front elevation, the primary elevation of the slab at the garage is going to be at minus 6. While at the rest of the house, it's our benchmark elevation of 0, 0. So all our elevations are going to be taken from that. Now we don't necessarily need to tag the elevation of the top of the framing for the chimney. But we can do it down in here. We don't have to do it on every elevation, but just the ones that we think are going to be um, important to work with. So 
let's go ahead and let's let's begin by bringing some of this information down to where we need it. So let's begin by getting into the right layer to do this work. Now if we look at this, we're in general anno. Now luckily this is again is not one of those plans that has a lot of information. This one is a anno note roof. So we can actually change that one back to G anno. If we wanted to create a separate layer for a anno note elevation, we could do that. Or we could just keep it at G anno. So let's stay consistent. And let's go ahead and create one for that. So let's go ahead and I'm going to look at A anno note floor. Any one of these will do. I'm going to go create a new one and I'm going to do A dash anno dash note dash E L E V. That looks great. We're going to turn that into our current elevation, our current layer, and let's go ahead and make sure that any of the symbols that we brought in, notice it's not giving it to me here because we've got them at different layers right now, and let's bring them all into one common layer, an A anno note elev right here, and we're good to go. So. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the line command on that layer. And I'm going to start from here and bring this out just a little bit to about here. And then go ahead and bring this to match right there. And I'm going to bring that in a little bit more. I think this is just too far. So using the stretch command, I'm pulling that into here. Now if I wanted to show more of this, I could. So here what I need to do is to modify this because this is not top of beam. This is top of slab and I need to put another marker there which is going to tell them that it's the garage. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to top of slab. Cap lock on, slab and I'm going to go garage in parentheses. I'm going to stretch that out a little bit so that it comes out. And that looks pretty good. I'm crowding that a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reverse what I just did and go ahead and bring that out. So it's just out to there. And I grabbed this with it accidentally. I'm going to move that back to about there. So it's easy to read on what I'm doing there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start copying this. I'm going to go ahead and mirror it over to the other side. And what I need to do is I need to let them know what the top of slab is at the front. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the elevation of this to minus zero feet, six inches. So that is what it's going to be at the front. Now what we can do is we can say top of slab varies because it is going to vary from um, minus four to minus six. We're going to include a two inch um, slab on that. So what we can do is top of slab, what we can say is elevation. Let's go ahead and modify this. I'm going to pull this back a little bit. We'll do minus there. And to this one, I'm going to go ahead and minus zero feet six inches. Pull that out of the way. And this is going to be four. Once again, I'm crowding it a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and stretch it. I'm going to remove this item from it and pull it out to there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and pull it up. Now, I'm not going to mark it yet where it's going to be, but I am obviously need to set it accurately. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this in a little bit to there. And I'm going to mark it first. Now, we know that our elevation is, we generated these elevations, and what we did is we offset our top of beam at 9 feet 
from the top of slab on the typical part of the house, not this part, but on there. So what we can do is we can find the location by just drawing a line in here and going ahead and moving this up to nine feet. Now technically it's eight foot eleven and one quarter because of the three quarter inch recess that we're doing in the in the slab. So I'm going to pull this back into here and the information we're going to give is going to be eight foot eleven and one quarter. So I'm going to go ahead I'm going to mirror this one and I'm going to mirror it to the other side. I'm going to go ahead and delete this side because we don't need to tag them in both sides because they are consistent all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and move this including its line and I'm going to move it from there to the outside of that and drag this closer. Again that's not going to be a problem on this one. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I, I want to line up these in the front. And I'm going to change this to top of beam. And this one's only going to be one elevation. So I'm going to take one of these off and deal with the other one. And so this is going to be plus. And this is going to be eight foot 11 and one quarter inch and delete the rest. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over and there we go. Now how can we edit this? And I'm not sure we can right here but if I open it up and I highlight that. I'm wondering if I can change anything in here in terms of the stack properties. So let's take a look at what we've got specifically for this text. So let's go ahead and click on that. It says upper and lower, style, one half fraction, horizontal, position, center, all of that is good. Text size, we let's go ahead and leave it. But what if we do diagonal? Let's see what that looks like. And let's do OK. And that looks a little bit better for me. It's diagonal. It definitely suits my purpose. And with that already set up, I'm going to go ahead and move this over. And I'm going to pull that in a little bit. That looks great. Now I can go ahead and copy this and I'm going to bring it back down to here. Still keeping those lined up and I, I really don't want this to be right on the object. I'm going to pull that out a little bit like that. Now this one obviously I want to bring in to show where it's going to be going into. So that is correct. Top of beam elevation 8 foot 11 and a quarter. This is top of slab and this one we don't have to identify you know with with any additional information and this one is going to be zero feet zero inches and I'm going to move that over to here. Now one of the good things about this is once you've done one all your information for the other ones um, are going to be falling into place. I'm going to go ahead. I am going to do the same thing with the fractional arrangements. I'm going to do that here. I'm going to look at the stack properties. Let me see if we can do that. Stack properties. Let's go and also change that to diagonal. Let's do OK. And let's do it to this one. I guess it only does one at a time. pretty good and we're going to go back and do that on the roof plan also. 
So we've got the same issue here. We want to go ahead and um, we're going to do a, I'm going to move this over a little bit more. I'm going to take my ortho off and bring it up to about here. And then I'm going to go ahead and mirror this. I'm going to put my ortho back on. Enter and make sure that my numbers are coming out okay. Looks like they mirrored okay. Take my ortho off to move it and I'm going to move it somewhere over here. I'm going to bring this one a little closer. And if you want to make sure that you've got these all in the right location. I don't think we really needed to stack that up into there. But we're going to go ahead and measure this one down in here and give it an elevation in relation to zero, zero. So we could do that with a dimension or we can do that with a similar tag to here. The only thing missing from this is what finish we're doing on the house and also what our Q leader is going to look like. So let's go ahead and see if what we can do is we can sort of fix what we're going to do with the Q leader size for the arrowhead so that we don't have to keep changing it as we go. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that when we do our Q leaders that we don't run into the problems where we have to keep changing them and making them bigger to the 330 seconds. The problem is that Q leader is tied directly to the dimension style that we're using. And our dimension style, which was annotative, works out very well for us in terms of if we go to the modifier, you're going to see that when we go to our symbols and arrows, we have it set to 1 16th of an inch because that works for our architectural tick marks. The problem is it really doesn't work for our um, Q leader arrowheads. So the best thing that we can do is let's cancel out of that. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to create a new one. And I'm going to call it Q leader. The only thing we really need to change on this right now is going to be our, I'm going to say continue. I'm going to change the symbols and arrows. And I'm going to go ahead and change this. This really doesn't matter because the Q leader will automatically go to this closed fill in here. And um, let's go ahead and we're going to change this to three thirty seconds of an inch. I'm going to do OK and do close. So what we have to be cognizant, though, of is that whenever we decide to do a Q leader, that we are going to be in the right dimension style for it. And the minute that we're going to do any annotations in terms of any dimensions, we switch back to that. So let's go ahead and let's switch to the Q leader. And I'm going to go ahead and type Q to begin the Q leader command. And I'm going to put my first line here, second line there. And I'm going to go ahead and put my ortho back on. And go ahead and hit enter. And there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead. I want to change my shoulder length here. I'm going to pull that in a little bit over this way and that looks pretty good for that. So, all right, so with that information squared away, let's go ahead and we can copy, start copying some of this information down to the next elevation and then what we'll do is we'll bring them over to the two side elevations and transfer the information there. Now the only other thing we may want to do here is to actually give them a height to where the top of the window is, where the header is going to be located. So for that, we definitely need to change back to our annotative in here. We're at the proper scale, which is one quarter inch. And I'm going to go ahead and go to linear dimension. And what we can do is just click right in here, click to there, and we can put seven right there. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'd rather dimension this one and then just put typical. That this side is going to give me a little bit more room. Right in there. So all we need to do is to highlight that. Or I could do it on this side. 
Let's go ahead and do it that this side because I'm going to put stucco, typical right in there. I'm going to add a, one more note. So let's go ahead and let's just do this from here to here. Put this real close. And I'm going to go ahead and double click on this. Actually, just click on it once. Let's go to properties. And let's go ahead and go down to text. And you notice where it says text right here. We can go to, it says measurement, 7 foot 0. We can click on text override. I'm going to go ahead and put 7 foot 0 inch. And I'm going to put TYP for typical. But I need my cap lock on. TYP. And that changes that to 7 foot typical right into there. So that's some additional information that comes in handy. Now if you think that this triangle is too big, our text is the right size. That's what we want. That's 3 30 seconds of an inch. It corresponds with all our other uh, plans. So and elevations, all our text height ends up being that the same as some of these notes. The only problem I have with it, it seems just a little bit big for what we want. So there's nothing wrong in just going ahead and let's make a slight modification here. I want it just a little bit smaller. So I'm using a scale command and typing in my scale factor of 0.75. And that brings it down just a little bit more. I could even shrink it a little bit more than that, but I think that's sufficient. I'm going to go ahead and move it away from the numbers just a little bit. Turn off my... That looks great. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Use my scale command. That's my scale point. I'm going to type in 0.75. Hit enter. And just like the last time, I'm going to move it a little bit further away from my numbers. Now the best thing to do is to do this initially before you start copying into every other elevation in there. So let's go ahead and let's start copying. And I think we can almost do this in one shot like this. This looks great. And we won't need this one over in here. So what we can do is if these are lined up correctly or even if they're not, we can grab it. We can grab it by this point. Let's go ahead and highlight them again. I lost the highlight. I'm even going to copy the leader. And let's copy it from this point. down to that point. So now they're all lined up. I've got that there. I don't need to put any of that information, but I am going to want one additional tag up here at the top of framing. So let's make a couple of modifications in here. Actually this works out perfect. I don't really need to do too much of anything on here. The only thing I want to do is to repeat this dimension. And once again I could just copy it and since they are all identical, I can copy it from this point. And let's copy it. I am also going to put a stucco note on here. Let's see if we can do it in here. That gets a little too close to that. So let's, I think we're going to have to just live with it here and find out where we're going to put in our stucco note. We can just do it right in here and put a couple of arrows going in every direction. Now the last thing we want to do is let's put our tag from here and I'm going to bring it up to here. It doesn't need to line up with this one but it should be here and just like what we did previously I'm going to move it out from the piece just a little bit, put my ortho on. And now what I need to do is to find out what my elevation is. Now this can vary a little bit, obviously that is a design decision, but what I want to do is I'm going to go back to the home tab. I'm going to do a measurement from here to here. And our vertical is 19 feet 4 inches. I'm going to avoid the quarter inch, so I'm just going to put right in here it's at plus 
19 feet 4 inches. I'm going to shift this over so that it can line up with this right here. That looks good. I can actually pull it in a little bit more that it's not sticking out so much. move the whole thing out just slightly from there. So that looks good. I've got my 5 and 12, my concrete roof tile information, the pitches, top of beam, top of slab, top of the windows is located. All my windows are tagged somewhere else. Now all I really need is my stucco note. So I want to make sure once again in, under annotate, I'm an annotated for my multi-line text. So what I can do is just create a text box right here, make sure my cap lock is in, and I'm going to put stucco, and move this down to here. Now sometimes you can, let's put it in over here, and what we can do is we'll just run it over. So, and I'm going to move it here, and put it up just a little bit more like that. Now, I want to go back to my home tab, or actually my annotate tab. I'm going to change my dimension back to Q leader. And I'm going to start my Q leader command, enter. And I'm going to go ahead and just put an arrow this way. Put on my ortho, bring this to here, enter, enter. Press escape to get out of it. I don't want to put any annotations other than what I already did. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat Q leader. And this time I'm just going to put an arrow in the opposite direction. Take my ortho off. And at this point I can hit escape. Ideally we want these to line up as much as possible. So that looks pretty good for the stucco. Let's go ahead and let's duplicate the stucco and we'll do just a couple of different Q leaders up on the top. Now I'm copying it so I don't have to do anything different here. So I'm just going to put stucco. And once again, I'm still in Q leader. I'm going to go right click and find my recent input. Go to Q leader. And I can do, put my ortho back on. Actually, I hit the wrong key. Let's try that again. Recent input, Q leader. F8. Let's put it back on. Escape. Repeat Q leader. F8. Turn it off. Lie, try to line it up, as I mentioned before. Bring it into there. Escape. And that looks great. We've got our materials that we need. We've got our materials. We've got our height of windows. All the information we need is located right there. So let's go ahead and let's take care of the next elevation. And we'll go back and tidy up a couple things on the floor plan and on the roof plan. So what we can do is, since we don't have the information readily available here, but rather here, so we're going to have to move one of these a little bit out of the way so that this doesn't show up. Um, let's go ahead and let's see what we got going on here. So there's our first elevation. So in reality, I think all this was just residue left over here that we really didn't need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and take this information that we've got into here, at least from one of them, and carry it on over to here. So this one I think is kind of important, so I'm going to bring that one straight across and we'll make the adjustments accordingly. Some of these will not line up the way we want them to, but I will be just modifying them as we go. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and just grab this by this point since our overhangs are common. I'm going to bring that right up into there. Now as an example, this we don't want located in there, but that is a simple move. Just grab both Q leaders. So 
So the idea is not to repeat any work you don't have to. Okay, this, we can easily grab that and move it to where we want to, maybe over here. Okay, this one, we don't need it. So I'm going to delete that one. This note, that looks great the way it is, and this one looks almost perfect for what we want. I'll bring that down a little bit. That one looks good there. If we wanted to put one up in here, we could, but again, that might just be a little bit of overkill. I just need to add a Q leader here. This top of beam is correct. This one belongs on the other side, while this one belongs on this side. So I just need to do some flipping here. I'm going to go ahead and flip it far enough so it doesn't occur inside it. And I'm going to flip that over there. Erase source object. I'm going to say yes in this case. And I want to mirror this one, including the line that goes with it. And I'm going to mirror somewhere up in here. And erase, erase source object. Yes, in that case. Okay, so I've got this one already in here. That's where I want it to. Top of slab garage. My only problem is I want it to be justified left. I mentioned that before. So I'm going to pull this out a little bit more just so that I can move this over to here. Top of slab garage goes from minus four inches to six, but we're showing this flat straight across. So we have to do a little bit of fixing right here. So, and this guy, very simple. I can move this guy. I don't want to show it here because it's a special situation. And we can take care of that with some different type of notes, but I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and I'm going to move it rather than copy. That was it. Maybe move. Let's grab it by that grip and I'm going to place it right there. So that works out good. And then I want to bring this guy in closer. I'm going to leave it out here and then just stretch this out. All right, that looks pretty good. I've got my top of beam here. I really don't need it on that side, but I can do my um, elevation of my top of beam. Actually, I needed to change this because this is not a beam. This is actual framing. So I'm going to say top of framing. I'm going to move this to line up. And I'll show you how that reflects itself on the elevation. Oops. My mouse is very sensitive in terms of trying to select my right click. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring this out to here. Too many lines right in there, but that's okay. We could say top of framing, or we could say top of plate, and that will indicate that it's wood framing. Let's just change that to plate. Great, now I can copy this. Let's copy that to here. And I'm going to mirror it. Around this point. And erase. There we go. That looks great. I can bring that out a little bit. And pull that in. That looks good. I've got my pitches there. Let's go ahead and copy this. I know it seems like a little bit of overkill, but... And to keep it the same distance apart, I'm going to bring it right into there. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. 
All right, that looks great. Now, what do I need to do here? Because I want to change this elevation a little bit. I want to go ahead and drag this up at least two inches right here. So I'm going to use the stretch command right here. Hit enter, and I'm going to go up with my ortho up two inches and change that like that. So what we have is we have a four inch step down here, and this slopes down two inches to the front. Now what that means is that my garage door is way too um, low, so that's not going to work. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to go ahead and modify this and bring that up. Actually, I did the wrong side. Move P for previous. And I'm going to go ahead and carry that up to there. All right. And that looks much better. Again, we can add some additional notes to give them information on exactly where these windows and doors should be. If you notice, they are dropped down to correspond with our drop down in our garage, while these are all matching seven feet, typical at that point. So we will put an additional bit of information in here, but that's going to require a little bit of thinking. We can do that in our next project. Okay. so. This looks great. I'm just going to go ahead and pull this out just a little bit like that. And I still need my Q leader at this point. I'm going to make sure I'm still in my Q leader for the annotations. Let's see if we can find it under our recent input. There's Q leader. I'm going to go ahead and place it there. Go to F8. And take F8 off. And go to here. Press escape. And I'm going to move this down a little bit. Or actually, I'm just going to move this up a little bit. Because I really prefer that comes out to the middle of it. So let's do a couple things. Let's go back and look at our elevation in here and see where we made um, a couple of adjustments that we needed to do. So this looks good. We got our top of slab marked. All of this is correct. No, nope, I think we're good here. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Let's go to our elevations. We've got our information for this one. Now let's go ahead and bring our information down for this one. Now, if you notice, this is way off in the distance in here. So we've got a little bit of careful um, where we indicate that, but this should say top of slab in garage. We're going to do the same thing for this to show that. We're going to show the beam elevation height here. Uh, we could have done the beam elevation height here, but we've got it in one location, so you don't really need to duplicate it. So we could do them both on this side for the rear. We'll put in all our pitches, etc. Let's go ahead and let's look at our model. And Let's go ahead and just copy, 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 and copy. Let's copy that with it. And this time, let's go ahead and go from this point, and let's just go for this point. So here we do have top of beam. We're assuming that there will be a beam across there. I don't like the way this is hitting, so I really want to modify that a little bit. I'm going to bring that in maybe to about here and also bring this guy over to about there. That looks much better. I do want to put my tag in there so maybe this isn't the best location for that. So let's do a little mirror somewhere over to this side. Erase source object. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and move this this way but I've got a little bit of a problem. So I need to actually go here and go to my properties and see if I can find the justification. So I want to do, instead of top right, I want to do top left. So that to me looks a lot better. Let's go ahead and bring this tag over. I'm going to copy it. Copy it from this point. I'm going to bring it to here. From there, erase source object, yes, and I'm going to go ahead and just pull this guy and pull it further over that way. 
All right, that looks great. That looks great. Let's bring another tag over in here. And I want to go ahead and this one needs to be mirrored over because it is the incorrect side. Erase source object, yes. And I'm going to pull that over. Align them. Stickler for detail here. Pull that over just a little bit. That looks great. And even though this isn't 100% accurate, I'm going to give it the implication that it does slope up there. Now this slope we need to indicate on our floor plan. So that's something that we're going to do in a minute. So let's just do another one of these tags. I'm going to copy this, our pitch. I'm going to go from here, and I'm going to bring that over to here. So we've got one in there. We've got one in there. We've got our top. We do want to indicate the top of the windows. We've got this one located in here. We need to bring the other one over in here. So we can bring it over from this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and copy from here. I'm going to copy it to here, but then I'm going to go ahead and move it out. Move. To there. I'm going to grab the line here and bring it to there. So these line up. This one's good by itself. I don't need that one there because it's all the same. There's my top of slab. I need my stucco note and I need my additional note for the top of windows. So I'm going to go ahead and put this guy here. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this guy from here. here. So you can tell that by using the copy command we've been able to speed up this process substantially. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. That looks great. We have quite a bit of information. We got the stucco. We got our top of plate elevation located there. Let's take a look at that. All of that looks pretty good. Now let's look at the other one and see if there was anything that we missed. Whoops. Yeah, here we go. We got top of plate, great roof tile. Okay. All right, so let's go back and let's uh, take a quick look at what we needed to do to make some adjustments on the floor plan that we haven't done yet. So we're actually stepping down six inches here to whatever is going to be our exterior. The same thing here. We've got that four inch step down here into the garage. We need a slope arrow here. That's gonna show us what our slope is and we can say two inch slope. And um, we also have a six inch step down here. So what we've done is we can go ahead and we're gonna go to model. And what I had previously done, I had created a couple of blocks. Now the numbers themselves are not blocks but a block here that indicates a six inch step down so what I can do is I can copy that and I'm gonna bring it into the floor plan at some location right here and I'm gonna go back to the floor plan right here and I'm gonna make sure that I change this to the correct layer so I'm gonna open that up and if we take a look at it right now, it's an A Anno note. L. Let's see if we highlight it, what it's at. It's G Anno. I want to change that to A Anno note floor. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and start moving it and locating where there's going to be a step down. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rotate it. Keep my ortho on. 
And I'm going to bring this guy right to where that step down is located, which is going to be right here. Okay, so there's my six inch step down. I'm going to copy that. And do the same thing for this door location right here. Now let's put it on this side. That looks great. Now what I need to do is I need to mirror it so I can get this one and this one. There won't be a step down here. There's a three quarter inch step down, but we don't need to indicate that. And for now, I'm not gonna indicate a step down in here to our pavers in the back. So that's a detail that we would have to work out. Let's go ahead and let's copy one of these. I'm gonna put it down in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and mirror it this way, put on my ortho. I'm going to erase a source object and I'm going to go ahead and change. I'm going to keep that one for now to use for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it and copy from here. That's perfect. That's our six inch step down. And then now I'm going to go ahead and move this one from here where it is now notice that I'm not changing it to four inches this is more a symbol than anything else but I am going to be changing the text to four inches so that works out nicely now what I need to do is to go ahead and indicate my two inch slope so that we show that when we tag the elevations here that it showed it at six inches so what we need to do is we need to go to our annotate um, we're still in Q leader, which is excellent. We want to be at this layer, which it is right now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see if I've got my recent input of Q leader anywhere in here. And I could put it over here or I could put it down here. I'm going to go ahead and put it down here. And I'll put an arrow long enough like that and press escape. And I'm going to go ahead and do some text. I can copy it from here. And I may, I may have to modify the length, but all I need to write in here is 2 inch with my caps still on, 2 inch slope. Rotate it. And move that over to here. And I don't want it to be in front of the arrowhead. And then I'm just going to grab this and stretch it out. Put back my ortho and just put two inch slope right there. I'm actually going to move that back here. I think I like it better further back, maybe some point right about there. All right, so I got my two inch slope coming down. That looks great. A couple more things I need to do. So let's say we've got this. That's obviously something that needed to be in a different layer. So that one was left over from our roof notes that we did, as is this one here. So unfortunately, we had those two still in layer zero. So let's go ahead and change those to the proper layer. A anode note roof. And that looks great. Okay. We're getting most of our information here. The only thing we need to add on this, and we can add it also to the roof plan, is going to be our elevation tags. So we can add our elevation tags here, 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 and here, which are going to correspond with our sheets for our floor plan. The other thing we want to add is going to be our section cut that's going to match into our section cut. So let's go ahead and quickly do that. I've also got those added right in here. So we've got an elevation tags right here, and all we need to do is modify this with the proper Okay, so I'm going to move that, place it over to here, and I'm going to go ahead and just place one over here for now. I'm going to go ahead and go to the floor plan and see where that ends up going. I'm going to open up my viewport so I can grab it. Now 
Now, if you notice when I highlight it, it's got a number of different scales attached to it. So I really don't want that. I only want the quarter inch scale that we're doing this at. So I want to add the lead scales. I'm going to highlight it. Add the lead scales. Whoops. Right click. And I'm going to take the eighth inch off. I don't need that. So I think it's going to be a little easier. There we go. All right. So I've got one located there. Now I need to know what elevation that corresponds with in what sheet. So I need to go back to my elevations. This is going to be my left side elevation. So it corresponds with this one, which is number one on sheet A5. So we go back to the floor plan that corresponds with it. Okay, so I'm gonna copy it. Copy it from here over to this side. Now I'm going to mirror it. F8. Erase source object. Yes. And this one corresponds with number two. A5. I'm going to get it a little bit further away from that last dimension line. Place that there. That looks great. Be nice to line them up if you could. So I'm just going to move it down just a little bit. Now this is another reason why I've got my cursors going all the way across, just because it helps me line things up. Now I'm going to put one up in here, and I'm going to put one down in here. So I may not want to rotate the whole thing, because I want the information on it to remain in that direction. So what I need to do is in, I need to rotate just this part of it, and I need to rotate with my ortho on this way. And my front elevation I know is going to be 1 on A-4. I'm going to do OK. There we go. And the last one I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this again up to the top. that right in there. Go ahead and rotate just this portion of it from the center, go all the way, and this one is going to be 2. I'm going to do OK. A4. Now that looks very good. Got a lot of information on the plan. Make sure to save it. And let's see where we need to turn that off. So let's go to our site plan. We don't want them showing up here, so we need to open up our viewport. With the viewport open, go to the freeze command and freeze it out. So that worked out. Okay, it looks like I lost some information in here. So we might need to bring our pool equipment. I'm going to find out what layer those were on. So let's go back to here and let's see what happened in there. I may have drawn those in the wrong layer. So I may have accidentally kept them on layer zero. So they are probably turned off. Or they may have still been on the A appliance layer. So. I really don't want to turn any of that off. Let's turn that back on. That would have been an accident. A1 site. Okay, all those guys are back. Again, these are little errors that as you go through them, you definitely want to check. So I've got those turned off. I didn't want them on here. That looks great. Pull equipment looks good. And these are things that you may catch as you go through the set. All right, let's take a look at our floor plan. My appliances are back on, beautiful. I've got my elevation tags here. Everything looks pretty good. Let's go to our roof plan. I've got my elevation tags that I want on there. But I'm going to go ahead and make a slight modification on that bottom tag that we did. I can do it right here. Now, this is one of those things where you just got to be a little bit careful. Because if you're fixing it here, you may be messing it up in the other one. So I'm just going to put that right about here. 
And then I'm going to go back to the floor plan and see if it made a difference. It did not, so I'm good there. So let's go back to the roof plan. I'm going to go ahead and close that. That looks great. I got my elevation tags where I want them. This one's fine. Everything looks good. I've got my tags. These we already just adjusted, right? So these were now adjusted to the correct layer. Let's close that up. And then finally, the last thing that we want to add is going to be our section cut, where we're going to be doing our section. So like I did in the other ones, we've got a section cut in here. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that over to where I think we could display it. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring it from this point and place it somewhere here right now. I think this is a, this is fine on there. But let's go ahead and take a look and see how it looks like with just the floor plan information. It needs to move out just a little bit and I can probably bring it in between these two dimension lines and I can probably pull this guy Let's go ahead and open up our viewport. I'm going to stretch this out and bring that over this way. Now once again, like everything else, it looks like it's got more than one scale on it, so that's not going to be necessary. Hit enter, and I'm going to go ahead and move this out to, let's just put it around here. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and highlight both sections here. And I'm going to go to Annotate, Add Delete Scales. I'm going to take the eighth inch off. We don't need that. And that looks great. So now all I really need to do is to see how that looks on the roof plan. And then we should be done with almost everything with the exception of our wall section annotation. So that looks great. Let's go ahead and let's go to our roof plan. And that looks okay. I may want to make an adjustment um, in terms of bringing it back in or just leaving it like that. Or actually just modifying uh, the dimension line location. So I think what I might do is just go ahead and modify the dimension line location. That way I don't have to go ahead and change my section mark. So I'm just going to do a stretch command. I'm going to grab all of these. I'm going to type R for remove and I'm going to remove this guy. I'm going to hit enter and I'm just going to move this ever so slightly to here and that looks acceptable to me. Close that out. That looks great. Let's go ahead and do an overall. That looks fantastic. Go back to our elevations. Roof plan looks good. Floor plan looks great. Site plan looks good. Additional information could easily go on any one of these plans, but for our first architectural set, it's looking pretty good. So this whole series of videos is going to be completed with the last video focusing on our wall section.